Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory Thank to you, Lord. Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I always uh, let the Holy Spirit basically have that, that little first nugget uh, come into my mind when I was uh, thinking of um, All Saints Day, All Saints Sunday. And uh, it actually was taking me back to these very fond memories I had uh, when I was attending uh, this little Swedish Lutheran church on the north side of Chicago. And they had this very pretty, um, well, large, but uh, miniature boat on the side of uh, their doorway entrance to the uh, sacristy room, which was kind of their, the back room behind the altar. And, of course, like many churches, the, the architecture slopes in this way to a nice little arch. Um, I bet most people don't think about the radicalness of the gospel in general and that even the architecture spoke to that. The architecture of the boat, well, we would think of it as capsized. But maybe what it really means is that uh, the sky is not our limit and that we, we are to like uh, be sailing on the seas of life that God puts before us and being humble enough to realize that we will always be in this constant uh, form of conversion, that this constant form of becoming. You heard the very lovely uh, song by Jason Gray. I remember uh, a few years back uh, when my husband and I lived in Oshkosh, there was uh, a fabulous old uh, church that they turned into a performance venue, uh, uh, Dweller 22 it was called. And uh, this man, Jason Gray, was a, a one-man band, but I loved the words in his song, and he even talked about his song in depth, though um, I don't remember much what he said, but it is something to make us really think about we are all saints. We have been made saints by the radical love of God as seen through Jesus Christ and that new creation that we are to be. And that new creation we are to be, uh, we have to be careful not to be tempted by the evil one, which, I mean, our world is full of temptations. Our world wants to race the mirror of the law that makes us look back at ourselves and see, well, hey, you know, I got to discern this better. I need to think about this. I need to, I need to let God lead me. And, uh, I love some of the descriptions that they had for a Matthew's Beatitudes. The Magna Carta of the Kingdom, the Ordination Address of the Twelve, uh, a great summary of faith teaching Jesus blessing us. And um, I love that idea, we are truly blessed. 
even when we don't think it, even when a lot of things in our lives are making it seem very tiny, we are blessed and we need to be a blessing to others. We are, we are blessed to be a blessing. And that blessed to be a blessing means living that radical love, giving that radical love, and having that great attitude of gratitude that examples that continual nonstop conversion. Oh. <laughs> I, uh, we, we have uh, um, uh, guests of the Wild Kingdom who are enjoying our, our <laughs> service this morning. <laughs> um, John is an amazing person of faith. Whether or not uh, there may have been uh, an elder and a younger John and um, a lot of complexities in uh, how far out and stretched uh, John's writings are of uh, witnessing Christ, I mean, these, these three verses tell us truly that we have the true faith. We have the true spiritual, uh, beautiful example of, of living. See what love the Father has given us so that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. One thing I've been seeing uh, that's been very troubling to me, and I even talked uh, in study with uh, my dear pastor and friend the other day, is just uh, many people are um, hate Christians or hate Christianity because uh, they, well, either they get hung up on the churchianity part of it, or they don't, they don't follow or they don't want to give up the power that, that God should be having in our lives. God should be having the power to help us go on the right path. And when you look at some of the other um, cultures of religion, uh, they're not universal. They're kind of around the self. A lot of them are around the self. Or, and I mean, even the first commandment is disobeyed. Uh, talking Old Testament here, you, thou shalt not kill, you know? And um, many, many cultures of, of faith see that the other uh, side of faith needs to be completely wiped out. And, is, and are they wiping it out because of their fear of, of uh, being humble and letting God live through us? The, the Beatitudes of both Matthew, I think, without the woes of Luke, I, I think really capture the beauty and truth of Jesus as the living word, that living word that is to touch and transform our hearts continually. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Um, every day when I'm doing my chaplaincy ministry, there's always something of the spirit that's challenged, which you can't be, can't be like coming in like rose colored glasses. Hi, let's have a joyful day. Are you happy today? And then people want to like uh, boot kick you out the window or, you know, <laughs> kick them up, kick you out the door. But, um, to be with people, to reach down to them. Uh, just like that old Stephen's ministry thing where I'm reaching down to those in the pit. I've got to have my hand firmly on Christ and i got to be there with them and help them find some hopefulness, find some light. This is the beauty of the truth of Jesus. He wants us to be witnesses. He wants us to uh, stretch ourselves beyond capacity. 
Martyrios, that word means witness in the Greek. And as we know, if we didn't have uh, a little over 2,000 years of uh, these witnesses who went beyond themselves, um, I don't think that the Christian church would have survived to today. Now, we don't think of ourselves necessarily as wanting to do the martyr's path, but then are we witnessing enough? Are we making our voices heard? Are we saying what God needs us to say in love to others to help them find that kingdom thinking, to, 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 to build that kingdom thinking through that constant conversion. And um, I have to say, I was uh, humbled and, and um, it was just very nice to hear of, from someone else to, to hear like, gosh, you've, you've changed so much. You've, you've learned from the past and you're, you're driving into the future and just like the, the prophet Isaiah, I, uh, my face is like flint set toward going into whatever valley or whatever uh, climb ever, whatever mountaintop I need to to then be able to move others with God's word, with love. And this is the place, the soul is the great tabernacle of the Holy Spirit. It is the new holy of the holies, uh, using a little church architecture there. The holy of the holies in the uh, ancient Israelite temple was the place where the essence of God is kept. Did you ever think that the essence of God, we're his creature, we're his children, is here, the soul? We don't think about our heart beating. We don't think about uh, many of the things we do. You know, when we shoulda, shoulda, woulda, coulda is losing weight or, you know, not eating really unhealthy stuff or uh, many things. Our, our body is a temple for the Lord who gave us life. And that new life is Christ. And Christ is alive within us. And these beatitudes should really come to life. These beatitudes should be, be our attitude in everything we do. And, you know, a lot of people get all hung up on, well, what does All Saints Day mean? Um, it, it is a time for us towards the summation of this whole discipleship school uh, of this, these past Sundays of the days after Pentecost to th make us think. If we push ourselves beyond the grain, if we do something that is uh, afflicting the comfortable and comforting the afflicted, that's a part of that tapping into that great witness we need to be. And it is a part of responding, responding in love, in love, not condemnation, not judge, not, uh, well, you don't believe what I believe, so I have to kill you, we, as we see with other religions or uh, religiosity. That's just a vertical relationship. We are called to have uh, a vertical relationship, believe, receive. We are to incorporate it, and we are to share. And that sharing, what sign am I, did I make? I made the cross. Jesus said on many occasions to uh, these ordinary people who became extraordinary, many disciples, men and women, not just the 12, he said to them, you got to go out and you need to pick up your cross and follow me. And sometimes when I think of the cross of Christ, I see what's at the center of that cross and um, I shouldn't feel sad, but then look what love the Father has given us. 
through the sacrifice of his only son in a horrible, horrible, ghastly death. But the victory of the cross, the victory of the cross should be the victory of these Beatitudes that, that get this heart to uh, be like flint stone against uh, the trials and tribulations of things. And like with the book of Revelation, we, we are to see through the symbolic language, salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb. Some of the uh, early Christian symbols and art I really appreciate. I love, I love to see this lamb with a great staff as the great shepherd and all the angels behind him and just the glory that is trying to be portrayed through the artist's eye. You know, the one thing that we, we don't necessarily uh, as well, we're so limited. We limit ourselves in everything. We limit ourselves from converting because we don't like change. We limit ourselves in, 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 in growing to think that, you know, look at people like Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci was someone who, uh, he was a great artist. He, was just, he did sculpture. He did scientific drawings. He did, he even invented things. There is somebody who went beyond the limits, okay? And, yes, primarily he's known to be an artist, but, you know, it's using that gift, using one of those gifts, creativity, to then, you know, be an outside-the-box thinker. You know, I, I know there's a lot of people in ministry who, uh, other women who are condemned for being in ministry because, oh, you're not supposed to, or whatever. But, you know, never give up the witness, never give up the fight to be what God uh, wants all of us to be. He wants us all to be witnesses of his radical love, the radical love of what he gave through Jesus, that costly pearl of grace we are to live grace, and we are to live grace, and we are to see, we are to be, and it's always going to be a becoming. The Enlightenment was the age that made us think, well, we, we can arrive. But like when I used to try to teach my dad how to use a computer, he said, I don't want to go the, uh, you know, he said, give me Z. He wanted to just kind of step over all the points. <laughs> I'm like, Dad, I love you, but, you know, you can't. You can't just go from A to Z. <laughs> Z is going to be happening when we meet Jesus face to face. When uh, we will really see how the devil has absolutely no tempt tempting power over us. And that we, we give too much onus to um, the devil and thinking, well, we're going to justify things. We're going to do this. We're going to... When the world revolves around the self, it curves inward and it dies. Um, we must never let this uh, eternal faith die. We must never, ever think in terms of limits, in terms of boundaries, in ter terms of political correctness, in terms, I do not like the word tolerate. We need to be accepting, we need to be growing, and we need to discern and, and be the truth. And not be the truth with uh, ugliness to one another, but be the truth of love. Be uh, uh, like another Mother Teresa in the world. Be like another Diedrich Bonhoeffer in the world. Be, uh, be the best you can be. Be the best Phil you can be. Be the, the best Lynn you can be. Be the best Hank you can be. Be the best Windsor you can be. <laughs> be, see, and, 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 and have that freedom. That f be free. True freedom is being a freely responsible servant of the gospel, 
Will you let that word of God make this great place, this tabernacle of the Holy Spirit, be where like your love radiates beyond yourself. The moment you live beyond yourself, where you incorporate these, is when you're going to see the fruits of the kingdom. You're going to see those spiritual fruits. You're going to see how that God, Jesus gave this great gift box in our hearts to tap into and use. We're not supposed to be idle. We are not supposed to be indifferent. We are never supposed to be greedy. Indifference and greed is the Satan's tempting tools to get us to, to uh, bear the fruits of death. I want to live. Who I want to live for and who I want to be an, an ever witness to is the beauty that is Christ, our beautiful Savior, the Prince of Peace, the power to change the world and really be those children of God. Loving, gracious Lord Jesus, thank you for everything that you teach us. These beatitudes should be an everyday teaching, like the waters of when we wash our face, we should remember our baptism. We should remember and learn from the past to grow to grow and go with your beautiful word uh, and be uh, ever more powerful. Uh, power that is only for your mission in the world. Amen.